The inspiring figure I'm chatting with in this video is Dr. Pasha Mukherjee, Miss England 2019. She hung up the crown and decided to go back to the hospital and work as a frontline doctor, as she thought it would be wrong to still be wearing it during the time of health crisis. Very proud of this doctor who swaps the crown for a stethoscope to fight the pandemic. And she believes that when doctors teach, it prevents the need to treat. I'm very happy to see a young doctor believe in patient education and believe in preventative care. Let's see what this Indian English doctor has to say. Hi, Basha. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. No problem. So, Pasha, I was very excited when I heard that a doctor has won the title of Miss England. Thank you. Uh, being a doctor myself, uh, it reminded me of the first Indian woman to get crowned as Miss World, Rita Faria. Yes. And that was way yes. back in 1966. She was a doctor too. And so, Pasha, how did uh, this beauty pageant uh, happen? Uh, was it right after med school? Tell us a little bit about it. Um, I was in my final year of medical school when I was uh, sort of competing in Miss England. I had sort of been doing modeling for about eight years. All the way through medical school, I'd carried on doing it as a sort of something on the side and, uh, you know, something to keep me balanced because um, I think I'm sort of quite creatively inclined as well um, as the academic side of things and I, I always needed um, some form of creative arts to keep me keep me balanced so for me modeling acting was that basically um, and uh, pageantry it's sort of similar to that whole line and um, and I also I'm very interested I've always been into social work I think a lot of medics they, they are inclined in that way that they like to do things for the community and stuff so, you know, pageantry sort of, I felt, kind of merged those paths in a way. Um, and, uh, you know, you could do both. Um, I had seen plenty of examples in the past um, who were indeed, you know, pilots and architects and uh, various other sort of uh, career women who went into pageantry uh, because all it is is a platform. You've talked about that, how you want to use your platform to promote preventative health care through education. And I, I was really glad when I saw that because not many physicians are into preventative care. And, you know, I, the reason I have my YouTube channel is because um, of my passion for preventative care. So let us uh, t tell us a little bit about that. And especially you mentioned that you're um, interested in diabetes prevention. Um. You know, it was it was a case of me working in hospital after winning Miss England, and um, I worked. I it was my first job, and I ended up in the busiest ward in the whole hospital, which is the respiratory unit. That that ward is actually always full. Um, you know, and I ended up being there in my very first job. And I was handling that job with uh, all the duties of being Miss England and preparing for Miss World. And um, it, was, it was at a time when I would see the patients, they'd come in one day, go home three days later, come back again two weeks later or something like that. And I just kept thinking, you know, this is just like a cycle. People just come in and go out and come back and that's it. And all we're doing is just solving the problem temporarily until they come back again. And uh, I thought this, this, can't, this can't possibly be the best care that we have for people. I thought, actually, we really need to start putting an end to this coming into hospital every time. You know, um, and this is no way to live as well. Chronic illnesses, I felt... Um, you know, they're just poorly managed. So much of it is because of lack of prevention and lack of, uh, you know, understanding of the disease itself. And, and I realized that um, for me, I became hyper aware of mm -hmm. uh, sugar and diabetes and PCOD mm -hmm. and all these things because I got a chance to go to medical school. 
-hmm. and because I knew my father had it and uh, I knew that my risks and all this and I realized that I know about all this because of being in the medical field but this knowledge can prevent so many lives from being uh, you know destroyed or even you know poorly affected by chronic illnesses if everybody the general public got some level of awareness uh, early on so um you know i i really wanted to um you know to sort of spread whatever i knew and create a platform where the general public are a lot more educated where their health is concern and i think you know this is a very um uh, zeitgeist topic at the moment because everybody is at home they're reading incessantly about covid-19 suddenly everybody is interested in preventative healthcare everybody is in, interested in learning about their health and learning about uh, a disease and this is what we need to do this is how the media in general needs to be tailored you know um and it's it's such a funny thing that it happened in my one year of rain as miss england that i perceived that the, you know healthcare should be much more highlighted in media and by a public you know a public figures and here we are now at a time when it, it really is everything that's on the media at the moment yeah that that's so true basha and education is such a powerful tool we as uh, you know i'm a primary care provider and i um, it's really hard in that 15 20 minutes time frame to you know educate the patient about their chronic disease and so what you're doing is uh, fantastic thank you thank keep doing that um you know after after winning miss england title you had planned to hang up your stethoscope for a while and focus on humanitarian work um but the universe had different plans because the pandemic happened right and you made a decision tell us about that decision um to me it really wasn't such a difficult decision because in all honesty i had to really bite the bullet to hang up my stethoscope i um, everybody that knows me that knew that how much i missed my job after i took that break mm. um you know it's it's so funny once a doctor always a doctor yes honestly <laughs> and i craved craved being you know clinically stimulated if that makes sense mm -hmm. you know stimulated in that perspective i mean I, i you know there's been a couple of stories in the media where i i'd been at an event and there there was a collapse as miss england i was there as miss england i had to put my crown down and i had to help in that arrest oh you know? <laughs> yeah and then during miss world there was two fractures that i diagnosed in my fellow contestants <laughs> So I guess I, you can never put your stethoscope down really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and to be honest, I love that about being yeah. a doctor because your mind is always inclined in that same way. Exactly. You're always looking at people's symptoms and you're always sort of, you know, I feel like the whole education system once you've gone through medicine, you see the world differently mm -hmm. um and uh i think i always utilize the skills of whether it's history taking listening the active listening skills i feel like i always use it anyway where in every situation of communication and and stuff so um i, I was all too happy to return to work to be honest because um um in all honesty what i loved about my life before miss england was the balance as i said i am creatively inclined but i always always chose to stay in education i never you know wanted to quit medicine and quit studies and go just to do modeling and acting mm -hmm. you know there was plenty of opportunities like that during my um you know medical school journey that i sort of made that sacrifice and chose to stay with medicine mm -hmm. so you know it, it was in um, I felt a deep void in my life when I took this time off from um, being in an actual hospital environment. Um, I missed that totally. Even though it was becoming so exhausting to balance both lives, I still really missed it. Yeah. Yeah. So I was very happy to come back. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're so right cuz science and art go hand in hand. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I I came across this this cartoon and and I'm going to read this. I just love this. Miss England traded her crown for a new stethoscope 
to push COVID down and flatten the slope. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. That's so sweet. I didn't get the new stethoscope, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Abhasha, tell me, what are some of the challenges you're facing as a physician um, right now with this uh, pandemic? I heard you've been working 12-hour shifts, working, um, you know, long. Yeah, 13-hour shifts, yeah. Um, it, uh, uncertainty, I think that's been the most... Uh, challenging thing not not just for us at, at, at the front line but also everybody in general that is not knowing and mm -hmm. the fact that every day it's a great thing that every day we're making new progress and learning new things mm -hmm. which sort of still it's great but at the same time it, it, it does make us feel very anxious because this is not a disease that we've learned about in our textbooks and things mm -hmm. like that and we're sort of doing guesswork here in a way not to you know not to at all um you know um say that what we're doing is not right or anything like that but every day the rules change and uh, in our hospital for instance and many hospitals for instance um it, who we are testing for instance that keeps changing you know um the implications in larger society in terms of um you know when you test someone and then the results take 72 hours or 24 hours to return back do we keep them in hospital or do we send them back home and uh, you know that there's been new things uh, pop up in terms of care homes refusing to take back elderly uh, people who have not yet tested negative but that means we have to keep them in hospital for longer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's challenges like these and, and sort of every day we feel, every day we have this meeting, this doctor's meeting um, every morning, there's new things that we're having to like, oh, this policy has changed, that policy has changed, uh, this ward has been juggled, now we're, we're keeping these people together, not these people. And, and we as juniors as well, we're being circulated in different wards. I never get to find out if the patient I treated in off or saw in A and E one day, if they've ended up in ITU or if they've been discharged or something like that. Unless I physically follow up, that uh, the thing that we used to have before, where we'd get to know a patient for the duration of their stay, you know, we'd get to find out what their journey is a little bit and getting to see them every day in the ward or something like that. That's sort of been taken away, which. Um, I find that um, now I don't know any patients and every day there's new patients and it's sort of, uh, it, it makes me feel that, am I doing my job correctly? Am I being able to deliver the, the, the proper amount of care? Because uh, as a primary care physician, you probably understand this, that continuity is so, in, so influential in, in, in care, in quality of care. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's something that I, we're facing at least. And I can say, speak for myself, that's something that's, that I don't like in this current scenario is the uncertainty and the lack of continuity that we've got with many patients and scenarios as a whole. Right, yeah, I, I agree with you. And do you, um, do you ever feel anxious or any regrets coming back? No. No. No, I think I'm quite numb that's the right word to say. I, I'm not anxious. I don't know because I think I'm the sort of person that I, I don't really, I feel like I have a delayed response to situations anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this whole thing is uh, impacting me in a deep psychological level, but I think that speaks for all of us, everybody, and even non-medics. So I don't think I'm any different from everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. But we all have some, you know, some stress management strategies, um, you know, something that keeps us going. Anything in particular for you? Um, I think um, for me, uh, if um, I've been very fortunate that uh, as compared to the thousands of people stuck at home, um, you know, in a way, their, their everyday routine has been disrupted by uh, by this whole pandemic because they now don't have to go to work they're not going to bed on time they're not going to get up on time do you know that sort of thing i'm very lucky that i have that routine in place and i have to still time manage around that time frame and for me that's one of the driving factors i've always really enjoyed being under time pressures and i like to then add more tasks to my day um and i've been adding more tasks to my day 
again, in a creative way. So I, I've decided that I want to create YouTube content or TikTok content or something like that alongside my job. And uh, having that routine in place has really helped me cope. Um, that's why I'm really, really glad to have returned to work because it gives me some level of routine, um, which I feel disrupted as soon as I come back home and I'm having an off day, then it's just like, you know, it all goes haywire. And I think that routine is very, very helpful to me. Yeah. Having a structure definitely helps. Fantastic. Great. Thank you for your insights, Basha. And, you know, thank you for your time today. Um, I really appreciate it and good luck to you 